It's time for another Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. So, I'm continuing work on the battery charger. Now, you may remember in the previous video, I worked on the power supply and I chose this transformer. Well, as you probably know, the voltage out of that was a little bit higher than what I expected. So, I found another transformer which is much closer to what I want. Also, I started work on the charge sense circuit. But let's just get that out of the way for now and see what voltages we get out of this new power supply. So, let's plug this in and see what voltages we get. Right, so, we're now getting 47 volts out of this, which is pretty much close to that 48 volts I want. And if I flip this switch here to bring this extra 4.5 volt winding in, we now got 53 volts. Alright, so let's have a look at what we're getting out of the low voltage side. Hopefully without shorting anything out. I think I've connected this backwards, but it doesn't matter. About 19 and a half volts. So that's looking good. Right, so I need to make sure that this charge sense circuit is working. And what this circuit is going to do is it's going to detect the voltage across the battery. And when the voltage across the battery that's being charged gets high enough, it will trip this relay and disconnect the battery. Now there's going to be an op amp in there, but I want to make sure that the voltages are doing what they should do. So I want to make sure that this voltage regulator is taking that 19 or so volts and stepping it down to 12 volts. Now I'm a little bit concerned because there's going to be a lot of voltage dropped across that regulator. It's going to be like 8 volts or so. Actually maybe more around 7 volts, but yeah, I don't know how hot that regulator is going to get. Just powering up the um, op amp is, well, it's not going to re really be anything, but when the relay comes in, I don't know how much more current that's going to draw, which will heat up the regulator more, so yeah, I'm just keeping that in mind. Let's see what voltage we've got at the moment. I'm just plugging that in. Okay, yeah. So I'm measuring it up where the chip would be, and we've got 12 volts, which is right where I want it. Now the next thing I want to do is, I want to make sure that this relay trips. So this MOSFET is connected right here, where I'm pointing at. So, if I put a wire on the positive, and touch that MOSFET gate, yep, the relay comes on. You might have heard it click. Now if I discharge the MOSFET gate by to zero, if I can get it on there. there yeah. Okay, so it's been on for about five minutes and uh, really is only just a tiny bit warm. So I'm not even going to need a heat sink on that. I thought I would, but that seems perfectly okay. So yeah, let's just turn the relay off. And I think it's about time to try this with an op-amp. Right, so, about to plug this in and see if it works. So, how this actually works is, got a couple of resistors here which provide a reference voltage. In this case it's going to be 6 volts. And they're connected to the op-amp's inverting input. And this variable resistor is connected between ground and this wire here. And the middle pin of that variable resistor is going to the op amp's non inverting input. Now, eventually, this will be connected to the battery so I can sense the battery's voltage. And basically, when the op amp's non inverting input goes higher than the inverting input, I have to think a bit because I get a little bit thrown off by the double negative there, but when that voltage gets high enough, the op amp's output will go high. It will turn on this MOSFET, which in turn turns on the relay, which in turn disconnects the battery. Well, disconnects the battery from the charging circuit. Right, so, everything seems to be alright so far. 
So to represent the battery being charged, I'm just using this little 9 volt battery. I've got it connected up to the potentiometer here. And I'm measuring the voltage at the non-inverting input on the multimeter here. So, I'm going to turn this up so the voltage steadily goes up. And when we get to about 6 volts at the op amps, non-inverting input, the relay should trip. Yep, and there we go. So, low battery, charged battery, low battery, charged battery. Well, now we know this all works, it's time to build the actual charging part of the circuit. Okay, so now I'm working on the charge circuit, or a sort of mock-up of it. I've had a little bit of a rethink about the charging circuit, which is this part you can see up here. Now you may remember in the previous video there were two diodes here. Well, I've replaced that with a transistor and also a variable resistor. So this way I can actually have some control over the current limit. So as the current increases, the voltage across this sense resistor will also increase. And we can send some of that into this transistor here with this variable resistor. And when that voltage gets to about 0.6 volts, this transistor will start to conduct and will start to turn this transistor off, limiting the current. So, Heiyushi mock-up of circuit is not real circuit, but is all components. I don't know why I'm talking like that, but yeah. So, for the sense resistor, I'm using a 47 ohm wire wound resistor. My voltmeter is measuring the voltage going into the circuit and this contraption here is measuring the voltage coming out and also the current. Now, if I can find a screwdriver. So this, poten uh, this potentiometer here is the voltage adjust and this one here is the current limit. So if I twiddle the voltage adjust, you'll see that the voltage changes. Actually, if I go the other way, See, we're down to about 11.38, 9.97, 8.66, 7.82, and yeah, that's all the way. Right, I'm going to turn this to 12 volts. That's a little too far. There we go. So we've got about 15 volts going in and about 12 volts coming out. I'm going to adjust the input voltage. I'm going to turn it up all the way as far as it goes so 23 volts and as you can see the voltage has remained pretty stable it's gone up a little bit it's not perfect but it's still pretty good anyway i'm now going to connect a load so i'm just going to use this little light bulb as our load okay there we go so, with the current limit, the voltage has gone down to 7.19 volts, and we're about 41 milliamps. Now when I try to adjust the output voltage, as you can see, it does not budge no matter what I do, because we're already at the current limit. So I'm just going to put that on its fullest. Is it the right way? Let me just unplug. No, I need to go the other way to get the full voltage. Let's just put that on 12 volts again. Right. Connect up the bulb. As you can see, the voltage has gone down to 7 point whatever. Now I'm going to adjust the current limit. And now, as you can see, as I adjust this one, the bulb gets brighter and dimmer, indicating that the current does indeed change. So, we're at about 54 milliamps now, and about 11.3 volts. I can go up to... that's about as far as I can go up to. I can make this go down, and as you can see, the current's dropping and the light bulb's getting dimmer. 
and this is down all the way and we're at 3.51 volts 27 milliamps put that back to 40 milliamps and I'm going to connect up a different load so let's connect up these light bulbs and make sure that they're actually in the shop this time Now it's not going to light those light bulbs up because the current limit is just, well, it's just not enough to light these bulbs, but you'll see the current has only gone up just a little bit. As I adjust the input voltage, you can see the current barely changes at all. Now I'm going to short circuits and check this out. Short circuit conditions 52 milliamps. I can turn the input voltage all the way up and it barely shifts. 60 milliamps now. So, yeah, I think that's working pretty well. Of course, the scary part is making the 48 volt 1 amp version of this circuit putting it on this board and connecting it up to my bike battery that's gonna be a bit scary right so this is take 387 so one thing I want to do before I put all of that stuff on that board is I want some way of measuring the current now my faulty meter I call it a faulty meter because it doesn't measure current anymore I've replaced the fuses in it, but it just still refuses to cooperate. This doohickey, though, does. Although I'm not going to put 40 volts for this. So, what I am using it for is to calibrate this amp meter that I'm making. So all this wire that's wound around this spool, that's the shunt. And I've calibrated that, so one amp is exactly where the white area and the red area meet. And all these resistors and light bulbs, that's, that's how I could get one amp from the 15 volt, two amp supply that I'm using here. So if we connect that, those bulbs are gonna come on rather brightly, but... Oh, let's just connect that there. You can see we're reading eh, just a hair above an amp there. And the needle is right where those two meet. Just maybe just a hair past that, but and that's fine. Right, well, doing a few little tests here to make sure that it can handle the full voltage. So I've got this powered up on my homemade power supply. Now this can only do about 46 volts maximum, but that's enough for these tests anyway. Everything seems to be holding up. I've got the output set to 42 volts. Slightly weird thing, although actually a very weird thing. If I adjust the voltage and try to make it do more than what it can do, if that makes sense. I'll go over to the meter first. Okay, I'm turning that the wrong way. So we've got about 45 volts coming out, and on the scope, we're getting some oscillation at the small transistor and if, as I try to turn the voltage up more and more an oscillation gets bigger so yeah, I have to find out what's causing that also been looking at the data sheets and uh, doing a few other calculations this resistor, at the worst case scenario, is going to have about 33 volts coming through it, and according to Ohm's law here, that's going to be about, well, just over a watt, so I'm going to have to use a rather beefy 1K resistor, and my camera battery is just about to die, so... Ah well, here it goes. It's built. But does it work? Well, that's what I'm about to test. So. Let's give it a test. Same setup as before. This measures the gazinta. This measures the gazelta. Let's see if it works. Powering on now. And... Oh, nothing. Oh, because I haven't connected the wire. 
I wonder why it wasn't working and I haven't connected the wire. Right, there we go. So I've got it connected up to my variable supply set to 15 volts. And we're getting 14 volts out of the circuit. Let's see if we can adjust the output voltage of the circuit. It should be this potentiometer. Okay, nothing's happening. Maybe if I twiddle it the other way. Does that voltage change at all? Oh, it doesn't. Oh, wait, I know why. It's because these test voltages I'm using are a little too low for what I'm... This circuit's actually going to be used for. I'll just have to short out one of these diodes, and hopefully, then it will actually be able to test it. Alright. Let's try that again. Ah, oh, yeah, this time's doing it. So I can go down to about 7.2 volts. And up to about 14 volts. I'm going to set this to 12 volts like I did before. Okay, so what? 12.05 volts. No idea what that is. Some inconsiderate prick outside. Let's see if the current limit works. And indeed it does. Right then, let's see if we can adjust the current limit. Does that work? I think it does. Oh yeah, that's working. My circuit is working perfectly. Excellent. Just had to switch over to the mains from the camera because the battery was about to die. So. I've got a bunch of resistors here, low value resistors. I'm going to bridge this 47 ohm resistor, which is just there as a placeholder for right now. Actually, let's try the 2.2 ohm resistor. And the bulb should get brighter, indicating that the current has gone up. And of course, the voltage as well. But let's see, we get, yep. It certainly does. Let's try it with one of these. Um, 0.15 Oh yes Now let's check it under short circuit conditions Let's see what that gives us Short circuit current 51 milliamps We're doing good Well I think it's about time to test this on a much higher voltage now. Obviously I won't be able to use this because this is only good for up to 30 volts so it'll have to be the faulty meter all the way from now on. Right, so although I no longer have any way to measure the input voltage because I've got this connected to the output we are measuring the output voltage and I've got this connected to about 30 volts input at the moment so I'm going to whip this all the way up to 46 volts, which is the maximum that my power supply can do. And let's see what we get. Okay, that's 46 volts input. Output voltage has only gone up a little tiny bit. Now, let's see if we can short circuit that. And let's see if that stays safe. Yep. Okay, so that's short circuit conditions. The needle on that meter moved just a little tiny bit, telling me that the current is well below one amp. The only thing I haven't tested is the relay circuits, which I'm going to test in a minute or so. Of course it is when I can find my screwdriver so I can adjust the output voltage and get it to like 40 volts, which is where I want it to be. Nope, don't know where my screwdriver's gone. So, I'll just have to do it this way. Right, yeah, that's about where I want it. Let's try the short circuit conditions again. 2 Okay, that's a bit worrying. So, I'm measuring the voltage at the op-amps. Non-inverting input. I've got rather a crisscross of wires now, so... Because I've brought in the other transformer that's going to power the op-amp. 
I want to see what we get. Okay, that's in. I heard the relay click. So, we should be measuring no voltage at the outputs. And indeed we are. Of course, that is a little bit difficult now because now I actually don't know what the voltage it's given out is. So, I'm going to have to connect my meter elsewhere where I can measure the voltage. Actually, I better measure it at the diode. And I'm just going to twiddle these knobs until I have it working exactly how I wanted to. Right, I think I've got it. So I've set this so when the voltage gets to about 42 volts the relay comes on. So let's just start wicking up the output voltage. We're almost at 42. There we are. Went to that 42.5 volts and yeah, it um, still needs a little bit of fine adjustment but I think for the most part we're there. Right then, well, I think I'm just about done. So, I've got this all adjusted, and I've just realised that most of it is out of shot, as things usually are in my videos, because I don't look through the camera's viewfinder to check to see if they're in the shot properly. But yeah, I've found a suitable resistor, which is about 2.2 ohms. I've set the current limit to about 1 amp, and if I short circuit the output, Hopefully I'm not obscuring anything. The meter reads one app. So, so far so good. Anyway, I think this video is getting rather long, so I think I better leave you with a final schematic. So this is what I've come up with. And, it <clears throat> and it's basically the same as you saw before. Except I have made a few little modifications. I've added this capacitor for a little bit of extra stability and also I've added this switch, momentary switch to basically jump start the charging process because let's see, plug this in, turn it on and then connect up the battery, well the thing is in that moment when um, before you connected up the battery the um, it's going to think it's connected to a fully charged battery, so this relay will be on. And when you connect up the battery, it's not going to really do anything, because it's just not going to know that you've actually connected up a battery. So that's what that momentary switch does. So the battery gets connected, it brings the voltage down, the relay comes off and uh, starts charging the battery. Anyway, I'm just about to um, run out of space on my memory card, so yeah. Until next time, goodbye.